Yo, what's up everybody? This is Jose from Sun Life. On today's video, we're gonna take a drive through the hoods of Lakeland, Florida. One of the fastest growing cities in Florida and has the highest job growth in the entire country. Jonathan says when he does his hood videos, he's like, "Oh, I got a great day for recording in the hood." I'm like, "What?" He's like, "Yeah, rainy, gloomy days are perfect for hood records." It's like, I didn't know that. And it's true. It makes the video look more depressing. Not that I stage my videos to make them look bad. I don't like to like stage hood videos. I like to, I like you to see exactly what it feels like. <laughs> a nice house. <laughs> uh, well, that's like Alabama, though. Yeah. Yeah, you can afford a nice house, but what are you going to be dealing with every single day? Yeah. You know, how hood or trashy or whatever it is. That's what people don't realize about living in these types of neighborhoods. Like, yeah, it's more affordable and all, but mm -hmm. something happened up ahead. You can see all the police up there. Yeah. Put on my seatbelt before we get any closer. That's the thing. Like, you're always going to have to deal with some type of misappropriation. Yeah. It's not worth it. I'll tell you, I would rather live in somebody's garage in a nice neighborhood. Yeah. And then have a whole house to yourself in a bad yeah. area. Yeah. And when we, when we lived where we used to live, like the street would get shut down like three or four times a year at least. Oh, yeah, Naples? All yeah. the time. It's always getting shut down. And there's always something crazy. There's always something going on. And that's what people don't get. Yeah. Like the hood, though. Oh, they like got some really, neat really, cars really over really there. The Don't and stuff? Oh, no, for sale, you mean? Yeah. Well, you know, there's supposed to be. Um, there's a class, if we go to Orlando, mm -hmm. they have this thing called the Classics where um, it's the two largest African-American uh, football teams played each other yesterday. Mm -hmm. So it's all donks and stuff. If you wanted some cool cars, mm -hmm. and then we go down there. It looks like something went down over here. That's what I'm saying, like in the hood, uh, there's always something going on. Mm -hmm. You good? Yeah. There's definitely something going on. Mm -hmm. Always in the hood, there's always something going on. Yeah. something going on. I gotta go through here. I don't stop this. And let's turn the lights off. We gotta get going. And that's the thing about living in the hood is like you're always dealing with something for somebody. There's always something going on. I'm just have to talk about it. One of the crappiest places you could think of. 
I hope I never ever have to go to live in, like I would rather pay extra money to live in a better place and not and be broke. Yeah. Than live in a poor place where you're nonstop dealing with people's crap. You get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. It's like even like one day that could turn sour. Like you know, like like I've known people that have gone to jail mm -hmm. for something they didn't do simply because they were outside their house. Yep. You're walking home from the corner store and they get picked up on something they didn't even do, you know? And that's what people that live in, in nice areas like don't understand. Living in a crappy place can like really jeopardize your, your life in ways, you know, you're more likely to get. Like I'm not saying you're better or less than the next person because you live in a certain neighborhood. But if you live in a certain neighborhood, they'll pick you up on something like just, and that's it, you know? Like whether you did it or not, that's like irrelevant. You know, like in this neighborhood here, they might run up on you and pat you down or whatever, you know, and boom, you hide something on you. You could have had that on you walking through a nice neighborhood and the chances that you're getting pulled up by a cop and, and patted down for it are non-existent practically, you know? And, and a lot of people don't get that. In certain neighborhoods, they're not, they're not on edge. But in other areas, they're carrying and they're more propensed to pull and to you know to be intimidated because they're in fear like in a bad neighborhood somebody who's carrying they're already trying like looking for a reason to pull it on somebody because they're, they're intimidated but if they're in a better neighborhood they'll put up with something much riskier and they won't even think about it because of their surrounding like they, they feel like because it's a bad area that they're entitled to already be on the on the defensive like there's so many things that are stacked in your odds when you live in a bad neighborhood that a lot of people just don't understand. And I know a lot of my subscribers come from a different background. And um, I, I would really like for those subscribers to understand what an experience, what other people that come from a different background go through. Because there's a lot of, of things we go through when you're from a different background that you would never get to experience. And I, I learned this when I met Katie. Like, Katie, the first, our first date we went on was the day after we met. Mm -hmm. Two days after knowing Katie. Two days. What happened? Tell me what happened. Is this a Trump supporter in the hood? I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there's a. Uh, there's everything for everything. Yeah. You caught that, right? What just happened in front of us? Mm -hmm. You caught what just happened right in front of us, right? Yeah. You saw that, right? Mm hmm. The cop pulls us over. They don't say license and registration. Don't say anything. They just they threw him out of the car. They and they threw me out of the car. And they were like screaming, "Oh, we got him! We got him! We got him!" Mm -hmm. And they look at my license. I'm having a panic attack at this point, mm -hmm. justifiably. Yep. Mm -hmm. You've never experienced that, that type of treatment from law enforcement. Nope. Right. Never. But now what was different was that you're, now you're not with your white family, mm -hmm. now you're in a car with a Hispanic. Yep. In a crappy neighborhood. Mm-hmm. This is in Naples, Florida. We should have sued them. Yeah, we probably we, should have. We should have, like, you know. Mm -hmm. I, to this day, I've seen the- Cop, yep, when he, when he sees us, he, 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 he lets he, us go. He pulled me over one time and let me go. Yeah. I see him, I, I would see him when we lived in Naples at a uh, pizza parlor. He would walk away. He'd walk yep. away. He, he felt me over. so bad yeah, about he knows, it. So he knows what he did. Yeah. And he knows what he did. And He's... actually, if it wasn't because I married you as a white girl, mm -hmm. if I had not married you as a white girl, like mm -hmm. those cops would have never got off me. Like they were just constantly harassing me and other kids from my neighborhood that really weren't doing anything. Like, yeah. It, it was a constantly, like, <laughs> that was an ongoing thing. And ever since then, like once I got with you, like they knew they couldn't, like they knew they couldn't play dirty anymore because you were white. Yeah, they saw not only my last name but my address. Yeah. The fact that I actually lived there. Yeah. No, they knew. They knew the gig was over. Mm -hmm. Ever since I married you, I've, it's been safer for me to, for me to do anything. Go to yeah. the pizza. We were going to the pizza place that they weren't doing anything illegal at all. We were just going to get some pizza. I think we we're, yeah. We were was it that or Applebee's? Yeah, we're on our, we're going on a date. We're doing something. Yeah, we're, we're one of our first dates together or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, like we were just out going together. You know? Yeah. Oh, we were Hispanic. Mm -hmm. 
But they would have never, never, yeah. ever pulled that off on just, you yeah. know, a white person. That's what I'm saying about all those types of scenarios. Like, I should have told my dad. He would have lowered up. He would have. And, you know, like, that, with all these situations I'm talking to you guys about, if you were in a nice neighborhood, you wouldn't be susceptible to any of that stuff. Please find another place to sleep instead of for people... Look at this. Please find another place to sleep instead of where people pee on our property. Legend police will be doing patrols on this property to remove you. So, again, you can smell it, actually. Um... So they, they obviously this business has had a problem with people sleeping here, you know? And from the smell of other things. So what it comes down to is a lot of times when you live in bad neighborhoods, you're su you're susceptible to a lot of things that you wouldn't be susceptible to in a good neighborhood. Somebody like dumped some tires right there. You think somebody's gonna go into a nice rich neighborhood? and dump tires, not a chance in the world. You just know not to do that because those are the type of people that are gonna get the cops involved and probably find you with some cameras. For a little ride, we're gonna hop across the bridge and then jump across to the other side of the hood. So basically, you know, if you've come to a good place, you don't even understand all the odds that are stacked against you when you come from a crappy place. It's stuff that you're just not like like Katie for example like she Katie had no idea that a cop was gonna pull you over search you throw you on the ground like she said not even ask your license or registration like that's something you own like Katie would almost expect you know coming from her background how's your light you know driver's license and registration none of that but they knew they messed up at the moment me and you hooked up and we were going together you know, you, me and you are now going together to get some, some, you know, we're together. They stopped treating me differently. Like those cops in Naples st started to treat me differently when I was with you. Because they knew that maybe your parents were lawyer up, whatever. Like actually at that point, oh crap. I realize how slow this truck was off the line. <laughs> this isn't the other, I'm, I'm thinking I'm in a smaller car. <laughs> this thing is like a hard, bro. It's slow, slow, slow. And the gas mod on this thing sucks. They've already spent like $50 in gas. Mm -hmm. This thing is a freaking gas hog. To the point that one time I was speeding and this cop pulled me over. When he saw it was me, he didn't say a word. He just, he just left and that was it. He stopped following me. Like, you know, and again, I've, I've seen friends where, they're not friends, but people that I grew up with where the cops would come to your house and you report a theft or something. And they were trying to convince you to put on their police report that, oh, we know for sure it was this person. How do you know? Oh, don't just trust us. We know it was this person. You don't know it was this person. Like, when, um, one time we had a, a crime that happened at the house. This is pretty rough in here, bro. Look at the stuff going on this side of the road. I gotta turn back around. That's the hood right there. That's a wannabe cop. Uh, so retired. Make, yeah, make the car look like a retired cop car. Yeah. <laughs> Man, one of those deals where the cops had no evidence, but they were trying to like tell you how to write their police report. You know, mm -hmm. you know, um, telling you who did it when there was absolutely no evidence of who did it. It was just a random thing. I mean, it was, it was probably targeted, but we had no idea who it was. Mm -hmm. But the cops were trying to tell us that we knew who it was to put on the police report. Mm -hmm. You know, once they wanted to catch this person they hadn't had any crimes against that person but they for some reason they wanted to knock that person off the block someone who's not from that background doesn't understand um, how difficult it is um, for somebody who's from there to the reality of living in a bad neighborhood or, you know any of that so, like like when, mm -hmm. always somebody that says oh you only drive around the bad areas, or no? Why are you anyway. always showing the bad areas? We we have did a video. Is that a cat? We did when we came to Lakeland. We did a video showing around the lakes and stuff, the nice area. Yeah. We're also showing the hoods. <laughs> it's like it's like the video is probably there. Like people are 
that are so blinded by their ignorance that mm -hmm. they're so blinded by their ignorance yeah. that what they think is right is actually they're they're wrong mm -hmm. and they actually think they're right because they're so blinded by their ignorance. Mm -hmm. So on, on my channel, I do try to. Um, mm -hmm. And one thing I've learned, just because you haven't experienced it, doesn't mean it's, it's not, not a valid real. experience. Yes. Yes. And that's one thing about like the African American community, for example, mm -hmm. is that a lot of people haven't experienced what they've gone through. So it's really hard for you to understand what they've lived. Black, let's say. They would have been much more than that, you know what I mean? Supposedly Key West- They like, were drunk. But it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, yeah. that's not an excuse. Yeah. It's not an excuse, but for example, when we were in, in um, oh, there was like three. <laughs> yeah. There was three, three people, instances. Three people walking around Key West. You had three people who uh, picked on you for being obese, right? It yeah. doesn't matter if they were drunk or not; they did it. There's no excuses. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yet Key West strives to be, or supposedly, they're supposed to be the most accepting liberal place, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but three people picked on you for being obese in Key West. Mm -hmm. And in one Alabama, was very, very vulgar. Yeah, and in Alabama, that wouldn't happen. And you grew up there for a year. Nobody picked on you ever up there. It was very, and I even I noticed it, it was very favorable for you. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, like, I, I liked it. I liked it for my reasons. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I have to be in a relationship and it's not always about me so i have to be as careful as him yeah and now here it's backwards mm -hmm. here i have an okay this position but then people are trying to pick on you like when you go to the store here there's got people making fun of you for being big or whatever um actually in fort myers yeah. i haven't had that problem yeah but like in the keys for example yeah in the florida keys there's always somebody picking on you which in alabama what's this thing It's just very interesting how, like, in one part of the world, you know, in Alabama, um, I noticed how favorably this position, position you were, right? You're very favorably looked at there. Now, you go to the Keys and people are picking on you. Mm -hmm. Now, the Keys, in their in their idea, yeah. being the most liberal place or whatever, they would think that they're... Um, better you know whatever they're more accepting mm -hmm. like you ask somebody about the keys oh they're very accepting you know accepting of what accepting of their own kind because you go there and you're getting picked on like you're getting harassed and, and mistreated right mm -hmm. and, and there's no excuse there's no they're drinking no that's not an excuse there's no excuse mistreatment yeah. is mistreatment there's no I, there's no excuse why they pick on yeah yeah flip the script you go to the other extreme where they're very conservative and yeah. they're very protective of somebody like you so at the end of the day you just realize that there's there's kind of a, a serious um disposition towards certain people in one place and in one place you could have a very favorable um disposition against you and in another place, it could be the complete opposite. Based nothing, based on nothing more than just who you are as a person. It's a different place. Then you realize, oh, it, it does matter. Are they screaming at us or just at each other? At each other. I'll get out and beat one of these people. I ain't afraid of nobody. <laughs> I ain't afraid of their hood, man. I'll get out and beat somebody right here on the side of the curb. I'm, I'm no. not this that's, That's a nice hearse. <laughs> yeah. Blue. You, what? <laughs> what did you just. That? That's Anyways, a guys, nice hearse. That's our drive around okay. through the lakes of. To the lakes. To the hoods of Lakeland, Florida. I hope you guys liked it. I'm sure there's worse hoods out there. This is just a brief taste of what's out here. Mm -hmm. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe around of downtown.